Um, I'm Carol Cassano. I work for John Hancock. And why I'm here today is I'm going to help you take advantage of your retirement plan. So let me kind of get you up to date. Um, just as Jeff said, you're currently transitioning from your old 401k, remind me again, where it is, at the principal, over to John Hancock. You're going to be receiving um, some kind of notification, a letter just telling you um, about a blackout if you've not already gotten that. And the blackout is just telling you that you can no longer view that principal account on their website. And meanwhile, that money is coming over to John Hancock. And once we get everything allocated, then you'll be able to open it up on the John Hancock website. The money did get here, it is at John Hancock. And so what we're doing right now is we're actually doing all the calculations, making sure that all the money that belongs to each and every one of you gets allocated into your account, that everything is set up properly. So you don't have to worry about anything. We've got our actuaries all working on that. And uh, once that is completed, and all the money is deposited into each and, one of, each and every one of your accounts, then you'll be able to view your, uh, your website. We're looking at around the 15th of May. It should be thereabouts um, lifted. All right. I'm, I'm in now. You're in now. Okay. okay. My money's in there. Okay. So if she's in, that means everybody is in. Yeah. So if you go on your website, now I'm going to do a quick little web demo after, just to show you how to get access. It's super easy. Um, everything we're going to do today is pretty easy. And just, I am going to throw a lot of information at you because I really, I think knowledge is power. I think the more information you have, I want to do kind of a baseline because there's some people who are really savvy and some people maybe who aren't so savvy. And I really want everyone on the same playing field. So when Jeff and I come back again at a later time, you know, we really want you to fully understand what's going on. All right? Um, so what I'm going to do is just go through a little bit of education. My friends who were on the phone, uh, you should have all received an email. The email had the PDF of the uh, enrollment kit that we all have hard copy of here today. And then also the presentation was also in that. I'm hoping that you can see the presentation from where you are. And certainly this is your meeting, so if you have questions along the way, certainly let me know. All right? Any questions on what I've covered so far, though? Yes, Lynn, sorry. <laughs> um, when you guys put the money into our account, so it had been out there, because I went on the old one, which yeah. I probably printed out just to have a hard copy before I don't have access to it. Sure. But I saw that it was all taken out. Do you just automatically go to a like account? Good. Yeah. Oh, so that's a good question. So go ahead. Yeah, there's actually something called mapping. Good question. Yeah. So we, there are actually much more fun choices with Hancock than we had to prior. But yes, we try to match it up with like. They're not the same funds, right? But with similar funds. Okay. And there is one fun choice that's slightly different. Um, so if you had large cap growth, fine. If you had a target date in 2030, it'd be a safe target date. The one fund that's different, and a few of you are in the plan, is uh, it's kind of just instead of a, uh, it's called an asset allocation fund. Basically, it's, it's you can choose as a conservative fund or, or, or growth or moderate choice. It basically just stays level because that option, there's additional feature that they have which they really like, which, which we'll go into, but there's an addition, additional fee on that. I didn't want to actually just make a choice directly to that fund. So we actually put you into a 2020 target date. You can go in and then you can make the appropriate change. But before I put you into that fund, I want to make sure we explain today what that particular fund is. I don't know who, there's a few of you I know that are in, in those funds right now. Yeah, I think you are, yeah. So we'll kind of go through that. But right now you're in a 2020 target date, which is a very conservative model. Okay, thank you. Okay. Does everyone understand that? Or do you need more information? All right, so let's get going. So, you know, really the question becomes that you need to ask yourself is, really, how much money do I need in retirement? And those of you who are not in your 401k plan at this time, what we try to do is make this as easy as possible for you. Are you currently in the plan or not? Yes. Yes. There you go. Anyone else not getting Which one do I, do I need a, she has a different Yep, because some people are in the plan and some people are not. You're in the plan. All right, get you one for in your plan. Just a director, Jane. Everyone's still starting. No, I'm good, thank you. Sure. Yep. Uh, you're in the plan. Okay. Thank you. Yes, okay. So I guess I can introduce you to these enrollment kits. Um, so the, there we have two groups of people in here. We have people who have money over at principal that's moving over to John Hancock. And then we have people who are eligible to participate who have not participated in the past. So because of that, we have two books. Um, Enjoy Getting There is for my friends who are not in the plan. The only real difference is that it has an enrollment form in it. So if you're not in the plan, um, it actually talks about how to enroll. If you are in the plan, you don't have to enroll. You are already <laughs> enrolled. 
and how your money comes over will already be invested for you. What I'm going to do today is really go through some education, talk about what other investment options you have so that you can see and kind of get a feel of what that looks like. And then you can decide once you have access to your account that you can change those investments at any time. All right, so that's why we have two different kits. And then the third kind of pile here I have is an investment book. Everything is online. We really want to direct you online. I'm going to show you how easy it is to access your account. If someone's a, like a, real, you know, a person who really wants hard copy and want to look at it right this very second, I do have some books up here, but we're just going to leave them up here until after the meeting. And then my friends on the phone, um, you do have access to that PDF on that PDF website. All of this information is in here and the website. All right? So let me kind of just get going into the presentation. Right away here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how much do you actually need in retirement. We're going to talk about how much you need to contribute today to get to that retirement income. And we're going to talk about how to invest that money. What we're going to try to do is make it as easy as possible for you. So the first thing I want you to think about is what does retirement look like for you? And it doesn't matter what book you're in, if you just open up kind of the folder and turn to page four. Are you currently in the 401k? No. Am I supposed to be on the other side of the room? No. You're going to be right here. I just want to know okay. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> All right. So what I'd like you to do is turn to page four. Because the first thing I want you to think about is what kind of income would you like to have in every year of retirement? So if you look at page four, starting on, on page four at the very top, it says, do you want $17,500 a year? Or is it $32,000? Or is it $45,000? If you look at the page next to it, it goes up to $120,000. I want you to start thinking about what that income looks like. I'll tell you why. Most people save in their retirement plan. It is the most used retirement vehicle in this country. Most people are in a retirement plan. But because they're saving, they don't think about what they need at the end. They just say in their mind, I'm saving. I'm going to have enough. A lot of people don't end up having enough, but they don't realize it until right before they retire. What I want you to do is while you're still working, think, of, think about your first goal. What do I need in retirement? So for example, if I read through the 17,500 a year, it says things like, Hello. Sam, you can't mute that? Is that a question for us? <laughs> they gotta use the chat function. Chat function. So if I read through the 17500 a year, it says things, I'm going to work part-time in retirement. If I read through the $120,000 a year, it says I'm going to belong to the country club. Two very different ways of living in retirement, and depending on how you get to live, it's how you save. All right? So once you determine that, oops, sorry, I'm thank you. <laughs> once you determine that, you need to really think about what you need to start saving. It's never too early or too late to start. I would say a half a loaf of bread at retirement is better than no loaf at all. Something is better than nothing. So if you've not started and you feel intimidated, or maybe somewhere along the way, you don't have that retirement plan anymore, rethink where you are today. Because even for myself, I know I have 20 more years before I retire. I know that's a long time in the investment world. And just 10 years can make a huge difference. So for example, here we have an example uh, of a 25-year-old, a 35-year-old, and a 45-year-old. So obvious, obviously starting at different age groups. Each person is saving $6,500 a year, and they're getting a 5% return, which is a pretty conservative return. Just based on that information, look at the asset difference on, on these savings. The 25-year-old had more time, so they're able to save more. They have about $800,000. By just waiting 10 years, it's less It's half of that. Waiting 10 more years, it's even half of that. The point is, the more time you have, the better an opportunity you have to meet those retirement goals. But something is better than nothing, as I said. And a 10-year difference or a 10-year time can make a huge difference in your account. So the question becomes, you know, really, how do I look at this and how do I, how do I calculate these tools? Let me just see if I have a little calculator over here. Let me just see for one second. No, let me just go back to this. Um, there is a calculator. This is all on website. You can see the you know, QR codes all through the booklet. You can actually do this all online. But I just want to see if I can have access. I, I, I did this earlier and I was able to access it. Um, it just depends if we're looking to the internet right now or yeah. not. And we are. Okay. 
So this little, this little tool is just showing you the power of compounding. Because a, a lot of people will say, well, I don't really want to contribute, you know, it, it's a long time before I retire, and it's not really going to make a difference. I just want to show you just that it can make a difference. So it's asking, how much have you saved so far? So let's just say we saved, I don't know, let's say we saved $10,000. Oh, thank you very much. We're going to say we've already has ten thousand dollars, and that could be savings. It could be a retirement plan. And then it asks, how much do you want to contribute per month? So I can say, well, you know, I can afford twenty-five dollars in payrolls. I'm just going to put twenty-five dollars. The annual rate of return. So you'll see in your investments, there's a historical rate of return. So we're just going to use a hypothetical of 5%. It's pretty conservative, but when you look at those returns and you can see what the history has been, it could be 6%, it could be 10%, it could be 3%. You know, certainly look at those percentages. And then how many years do you have left to retirement? What I want to show you is if someone's 20 years old, so I'm going to say we have 30 years before we retire, or 35 years. So based on this, I have $10,000, I'm saving $25 a payroll or a month, it's earning 5% interest, and I've got 35 years before I retire. This is what I'm putting in. So I put in about $20,000, time, if I'm 20 years old in this scenario. Look at the interest. If interest is actually higher than what I actually put in, because it's compounding. You put money in, it earns interest, and interest starts to earn interest. We all know this because we're in the mortgage company, right? What interest does over time to give you a final balance. Now, just showing you that if you waited, or if you waited, and maybe you're a little bit older, but let's just say we have a little more money. Maybe we have twenty thousand dollars in here. saving maybe a hundred dollars a month. And then let's say we have 15 more years or 10 years. Those are 10 years we can draw. And we calculate it. So it really just shows you that by waiting, look at the difference. I mean it's around like twenty thousand dollars less, but they had more money in the bank. So I'm just showing you that the sooner you begin, even if you put a little bit in, it does make a big difference over time. how much I'd like to have for income and retirement. So in the back pocket in your, um, in your book, you know, the, this hard copy book, for my friends on the phone, it, you'll see that if you actually are on the PDF, you can click on the calculator and you can actually do this right online. But the back pocket provides us for today kind of hard copy calculator. because I really want you to see how much you could possibly be saving or what you actually need based on your age. So again, it's in my back pocket. It kind of looks like a little scroll card. One side of the card is age 20 to 40. Just flip the whole card over. And the back side of the card is for people age 45 to 65. I always joke because I'm over the 45 mark. But the font is smaller. I keep saying to John Henry, I'm like, what the heck? Like, us older people need some bigger font. They're not listening to me. But point is, is I want you to take the little card here, and I want you to scroll up and down. I want you to line up your current age to that dollar amount you think you'd like to have in retirement. Once you line up your age to that dollar amount, I want you then to take a look at letter B. Oh, half my age. It's on the other side of the card. Oh, it's probably in between ages. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's in the back. So you don't have to remove the card. You just have to flip it, it over. Back there. On the old, on All the you have to do is flip it over. <laughs> do not on the old have side of the card. card. All right, so now what I want you to do is take a look at the letter B. In that letter B, it tells you that is the lump sum you need to have saved from now until retirement in order to get that salary. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's always one. Don't, don't let it scare you, though. Now I want to take, take a look at letter C. Letter C is telling you what to save per month based on what you've already saved. So maybe you have $10,000 or $25,000, or maybe you're just starting out with that with the zero. 
what it's telling you in that box is how much to save per month to get okay. to that dollar amount. Now, wow. don't <laughs> let this scare you. Don't let this scare you. This is a game tool. It is not sophisticated retirement planning. You've got Jeff. And there's st statistics the show that people who work, that people who work with a financial advisor do better than people who just try it on their own. He's offered to you that he will sit with you and do planning with you as part of the 401k. You don't have to pay additional fees. All right, so take advantage of that. We're not going to be with you at retirement. What we're doing today is to help you with tools so that you can be prepared for retirement. You want to retire with, with dignity. Okay? Um, it's assuming you're going to retire at age 67, assuming you're going to live to age 83, and it's assuming like about a 4.3% rate of return. So it's very conservative. Don't let it scare you, but I want you thinking. This year, 2015, the government changed how much you can put in your plan. Last year it was $17,500. This year it's $18,000. If you earn it, you can put it in. Unless you're fortunate you're over age 50, those folks can save an additional $6,000. I don't know about you guys, but I live in the real world. Most people I know don't max out. If you're maxing out, good for you. Don't worry about what someone else is doing. Do something. If 1% is all you can do, do 1%. Don't care what someone else is doing, as I said. Do what's best for you. Next year, get yourself to 2%, following your 3%. And I'm not a hypocrite. Every year when I get my W-2, I stick it on my computer. Yep, it lingers there for about three weeks. <laughs> but I go online, and I, this is what I tell myself. I promise myself every year I'm going to increase my contribution by 1%. I've done 2%, I've done 3% increases, but I always promise myself 1%. Always. Always. So if you've been maxing out last year, this year you can go up to the 18000 or up to the 6000 All right? Any questions on, on contribution versus savings and so forth? All right. So the question becomes, well, if I'm not looking at this and I'm not doing this, where is my money going to come from? Who's thought about retirement? Okay, come on, Monday morning at 7 in the morning, you're waking up. <laughs> Who doesn't think about retirement? What does it look like to you when you think about it? Right. What is it? Very scary. Very scary. <laughs> so is it, do you think about traveling or just doing what you want that day? Maybe golfing. I know you had a big golfing event the other night. Something like that, right? Yeah. But what people don't realize is that to do those things, it costs money. So when I ask people, why aren't you doing those things today? What do people say? Time and money. Today, you're getting a paycheck every, every payroll, if it's twice a month, and you're still not going and doing those travels. You're thinking that I'm going to do all this when I retire. But where's the money going to come from? I see a lot of young faces in here. Who feels good about Social Security? Okay. <laughs> I do, because I'm older. But a lot of young people, we don't know what Social Security is even going to look like to you. And then the second thought is, can I afford to live on Social Security? $1,600 a month or $2,000, whatever it is. Your company's 401k plan is really, again, as I said, in America, one of the leading um, ways of saving for your retirement. So just know that uh, we have all these other avenues, savings account, social security, but really those are supplemental ideas. Really you need to kind of keep that money strong and keep it invested. Just going to kind of go through this for a second. Um, so consolidation. So those of you who are currently in your principal 401k plan, that's coming over. You don't have to do any work. We're going to do all the backroom work. I guess now our thing is online so you can actually view it. But if you have another 401k plan somewhere else, so now you're getting that quarterly statement, you've been getting the principal, you've been getting these other statements. We have a team of people in our Boston office that are there waiting to hear from you. We collect distribution forms from other companies. So if you have another 401k, there's a toll-free number, I'll show you where it is in the book. You call us up, you'll be assigned that rep. That rep does, is not going to go anywhere. You're not going to call a toll-free number next week to see where your money is and get someone else. You're going to get the same person every time. That person will fill out the forms for you. You do it together. They will mail you the completed forms. You mail it in when you're ready. We will track that money until it comes in. Distribution, or different companies have different distribution dates. Sometimes it's in two weeks, sometimes it's in a month, sometimes it's up to a year. So when you're looking, let's say, as an example, if you have $100,000 and you completed these forms and all of a sudden you're like, where's my money? We take all that liability, we'll watch everything for you. We do not take a percentage. We do not get paid on this. It is our service to you. We just want you to know it's there. So if you have 401 case plan somewhere else, just know that we'll help you get that over here. 
Why? Because it's really easy to kind of organize and keep your statements on track, especially if you're sitting down with Jeff and he's trying to help you do some retirement planning, just so you're not over diversifying, meaning you're, you're not investing in the same investments everywhere. It's kind of nice and compact and it really helps you and Jeff to kind of organize a bit more um, some financial planning. All right, any questions on consolidation? Roth, all right. Yeah, so, uh, so that's a really good question. Uh, a Roth IRA today cannot roll into this plan. Right, that's government rules, that's not a John Hancock rules. So thank you for, for actually bringing that up because in your plan, you actually have two 401k plans. I, I call it two. One is your traditional 401k, which says, I decide how much to contribute out of my paycheck. Comes off my base pay. I don't pay state or federal income tax on that money. It goes into my plan. And when I pull the money out, I then pay taxes on it. That's your traditional. You also have the Roth 401k, so it's not an IRA, but it's a 401k in this plan as well. The Roth 401k says, yep, I still can decide how much to contribute, but I pay taxes on that money today. It goes into my plan, and as it grows and earns all, those, the, all the interest, it's 100% tax free. So, you have two buckets now. You can either do put all your money in the traditional, pay taxes later, or put all your money into the Roth pay taxes today, tax redistribution, or you can do both. All right, so why two buckets? You know, people think, well, is it good for me? And those are questions that you certainly can throw at Jeff. It's not for everybody. But let's say in retirement you needed a new roof. It costs $15,000. When you pull through the traditional 401k bucket, you're not pulling out just $15,000. You're pulling out maybe $18,000 because you have to pay taxes on that money, state and federal. If you have a Roth bucket, you're pulling out just the fifteen. Does that make sense? All right. So whether, whether it's good for you to have the Roth or the um, traditional, again, it's totally up to you. Any comments on it before I move on? There's a whole bunch of other reasons why you want a Roth or a traditional. I mean, there's a tax savings today, a tax later. There's also something called requirement, requirement distributions, which you have to have on traditional. You do not have to have that on the Roth. There's a whole bunch of different stuff. But if you want to know more about it, just set up time with me and I'll yep. go into more detail. Uh, there, I did have one question though. Yeah. Uh, reg, if you have regular IRAs, yes. a bunch of them, you can consolidate them yes. into this plan. I've had people who have like four or five, not sure what they want to do. Yes. You can just roll them right in. Yeah. yeah, it's only on the Roth IRA. You can, if you have a Roth 401k, you can roll it out into a Roth IRA if you terminate or leave or that kind of thing, but you can't roll it the other way around. It's, it's just government ruling right now. However, just as Jeff mentioned, if you have a traditional IRA, that you've taken a tax deduction on, you can roll that in. And again, that consolidation team can help you decipher whether or not um, you can roll that particular IRA to our plan. All right? Questions on that or any other questions? Did you have a question? Yeah, if you take out a loan on your uh, 401k, yes. that's money you're paying back, so you don't have to pay taxes. That's a really good question. So the question is, if I take a loan on my 401k, I'm not paying taxes on that money. So it goes like this. I, so first of all, you, can't, you cannot borrow or take a loan out on a Roth. Government rules, not John Hancock rules. You just can't take money out in your 401k in a Roth. Which means now I'm in the traditional bucket, right? So I'm borrowing from that. That money I've not paid taxes on. When I'm paying it back, I'm paying back, usually it's prime plus one. I'm paying it back with. But you are paying it back with monies you just paid taxes on. So you've got money in there you've not paid taxes on. You're paying it back with money you just paid taxes on, and when you pull the money out again, you will pay taxes on that money again. So but it's your money, you're paying yep. yourself interest. Right, but even if it's a loan that yes. you're taking, you're still going to pay taxes. No, 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 so you can have $5,000 out of the account. It's a loan to you. You're, okay. you're just paying yourself back interest. You're oh, I see what you're asking. On the loan distribution, yeah. right. correct. You're not paying taxes on okay. But when you're paying it back, you're paying it back with your money. Right, right. Tax right. Tax right. Tax right. All right, so we already did the contribution. We did the Roth already. Um, increasing as you go, and like I said, you know, people who've been in the plan, you know, if you've been, let me say, let me go back. John Hancock every year has all these seminars for us, and we always focus on investments, and this year was really the first year that we said, we're gonna put participants first. So we've actually studied participant behavior. Now remember, I'm a participant too. I'm contributing into a 401k plan, and what we've learned is that people do save, they just do. But let's say they start off saving at 3% or 4% or 5%, Three years later, five years later, they're still contributing 3% or 4% or 5%. They don't go in to increase that contribution. You need to increase as you go. 
You just do. You, you set that goal and then annually try to increase, as I said. Um, it's just showing you that it's just a small amount going from $100 a month or just $25 more a week um, can really make a difference in your account. So you're, certainly if you've been in the plan, kind of rethink what you've been doing and you know, increase as you go. All right, we're almost done. We're getting into the investment side of things at this point. All right, I like this. I'm going to have you open it up in your book. Um, let's see what page number this on. I just think it's easier sometimes just seeing it up close. This graph is found on your on your way, folks. It's found on page 16. And enjoy getting there. It's found on page 14. I think this graph is important because I want you to realize is that there's different levels of risk involved with different investments. Notice to the lower left, you have lower risk investments like the 30-day treasury bill, kind of like a CD at the bank, very conservative. Over to the right side, you have higher risk investments like small company stocks. Notice everything is color-coded for you. So in a snapshot, you're going to see whether something's aggressive or conservative. So easy way for me to remember, aggressive colors, reds and oranges, High risk, aggressive investments, low risk, nice blues and greens, nice and cool, so it's much more conservative, and then yellow is always balanced, it's right in the middle. What this graph shows us is how high that market segment has been and how low the market has gone. So let's take a look, look at the high risk side. Small company stocks have been as high as 142% rate of return. People have made money with small company stocks. But in accepting the fact that you can make money, you have to understand markets go down as well. And they've been down around a negative 58. When we look at the markets day to day to day to day, they're going to go up, they're going to go down, they're, they, they're extreme. But when you look at things long term, and that's really what you should be looking at, because we don't, we don't need this money in five years or 10 years. Most of us are 15, 20, and more out. Having said that, um, what you want to look at are the long term averages. And Long term, small company stocks have been averaged over 12% rate of return. All right? So let's compare the high risk to the low risk. People see this and they see zero, no market value. They get really excited because the media today scares us about investment. They make, they make it sound like it's a really bad thing. So there's no market risk. It's been as high as 14%. But look at the long term averages. It's only averaged 3.5 over 30 years. 3.5 barely keeps up with inflation, and it barely keeps up with cost of living. So that's kind of like this little lingering um, risk, right? Because this 3.5 doesn't keep up with inflation and cost of living. If I put all my money in that one investment, by the time I retire, I may not be able to retire because it didn't keep up. What you want to do while you're saving is keep your dollars strong. How do you do that? You invest it. But when we're talking about investments, people get paralyzed. Because people invest two ways, fear and greed. That's how we, we, we get greedy and we're like, oh, I'm going to go and everything's great. When markets fall, we fear, we jump out. You don't want to do that. What you want is you want to invest in a way that you pick a little bit of the markets because when something's up, like stocks are up, bonds are down. When bonds are up, stocks are down. So we don't know what market's going to be up or down when our, market hits, when our money hits the market. So what you want to do is you want to build what they call a nice diversified portfolio. My words, a nice variety of investments. How do you do that? How do we do that well? So I'm going to go forward here for a minute. There's a risk quiz. So my friends in the book that says enjoy getting there. And again, this is all, you can do this on your smartphone. It's all online. Um, for my friends in getting there, page 21 is the beginning of the risk list for my people who are in the plan. Okay. Thank you. Page 18. This one. All right. The risk list asks you six questions. How old are you? When do you plan on retiring? What do you think about a down market? What do you think about the stock market? How much risk are you willing to take? And I have my favorite question, do you think you can save on your own outside of your retirement plan? Most people can't. But maybe you can. Maybe you're one of those really great savers that can save whatever this balance was. Mine was like, like two point something million. Um, I know that I could never save that, save that on my own. But my point is, it asks you the questions. And if you look at the page next to it, I think some of you may have to turn a page. But based on how you answer those six questions, it's going to give you a scoring. And it's going to tell you what kind of investor you are. Here's your starting point. I take one every year. So I'm growing older. Somewhere along the way, if I've been aggressive, I'm going to become more conservative with time. 
so that as I reach my retirement level, it's conservative, meaning I'm protecting it. But if you have a long time before retirement, the stock markets have always outperformed, but you have to be able to tolerate those highs and lows. This risk quiz will help you understand yourself in a down market. You get it in an up market. There's always room for another dollar, I always say, right? You know, we never complain when we're making money. It's when markets go down. What's your sensitivity level? That's all we're trying to figure out, all right? So once you determine what kind of investor you are, there's actually two ways of participating in this plan. One, you can build your own portfolio. And all that means is you can read through all the different investment options you have available, decide which investments you want to invest in, or you can let John Hancock do it for you. If John Hancock does it for you, it's what we call target date funds. Target date funds are built on how old you are or how much time you have before retirement. So if you're a 20-year-old 20, a 20 investor, you're going to be aggressive. But what's nice about the target date fund, I don't like this term, but it's an easy way to um, explain it. It's kind of like a set it and forget it. A target date fund, you build a portfolio based on your age, and as you grow older, you will automatically become conservative. Automatically. So you really don't have to do anything. We pick the investments, we build a portfolio, we rebalance for you, and then we get you conservative until you reach that retirement level. If you're choosing investments yourself, you're going to have to revisit those investments. Just make sure that you're rebalanced. So two ways of participating. Build it yourself or let John Hancock do it for you. Everyone's still with me? Okay. So let me talk about um, the target date funds just for a moment. Um, those of you who are currently in the plan were mapped over. So if you were currently in a, if you were in a target date fund at the previous company, you will be in a target date fund here. If you have individual funds at the previous company, you will have like funds here at John Hancock. So you, if you know that you're building investments and you know you're going to have individual investments, if you know you've been in one of those target dates, you'll be in a target date here. If you're not stuck in any of those investments. Even though that money came over, it gets mapped over. You can change that. We have a website. I'm going to do a little quick demo for you in a minute. Um, if you're trying to figure out what target date you would go into, because the target dates are built on year of, of retirement. I'll just find that for you. I'm not sure both books have it. I think the getting there has it. Let's see. Yeah, so that's your on your way. Uh, for those of you in the plan, you have to go online and look at that. But let's just kind of determine it for you. So may people not in the plan, uh, pages... Yeah. So my people not in the plan is enjoy getting there. On page 17 is a little graph, and it just tells you um, to look at your birth year, and it tells you your retirement year. You don't really have to worry about you know what your retirement year is because you're going to give us your birthday. We're going to build it based on how old you are. I don't have the graph to put up up on the screen, but um, certainly for those of you who are interested in maybe at the target dates, I'll leave this open for you. So let me just tell you one more piece. So the target date, so this is the hard copy of your investments. What I just want to show you is just how diversified these portfolios are. We build the portfolio for you. And as I said, over time, we change kind of the allocation or the different investments to make you more conservative with time. The next way of investing, as I said, you can pick and choose all the different investments. But there's actually a third third set of investments that begin with the word select. And I just want to talk about that just for a moment. But before I move on, any questions on anything I've covered? The risk quiz, understanding um, you as an investor, or target date versus individual funds? Any questions so far on anything And again, there's just a lot of information, especially when you look at the risk, risk quiz, and it's very, it's very basic. A lot of other stuff. So that's why people will actually call me, email me, and that's fine. Just feel free. I'm definitely an asset for you guys. You know, I'm here to help you. So if you've got questions, just so say, I don't know what kind of investor I'm taking a look at other questions. I'll definitely help you in the way I can. feature and I just want to talk about this it's an option you don't have to choose this it is just something that's in your plan I want to explain it for you or to you so that you can understand it 
Um, it's not for everyone. It's actually designed for people. It was designed for people age 50 or older who maybe have kind of created a little nest egg. So it's kind of like an insurance on your 401k in, in the event that you're going to retire and you've got, you have down markets. So what happens? So let me, let me actually go back one step. So when my parents or my grandparents were young, they would work for the same company for like 40 or 50 years. They knew at the end of that 40 or 50 years that they would get X amount of dollars. They also knew they were going to get a social security. So as they were working, they knew they'd get this money with this social security and they knew how they were going to live in retirement. We don't have that anymore. Most people today do not have a pension. They just don't. So what this does is kind of gives you a feel of a pension. So it gives you a sense of predictability. How much will I have for retirement? So you're going to get your quarterly statements. You're going to see your statements. You're going to see how much is in there. But it's only as good as the market, right? So you're buying, your money's hitting the market, and you're buying all these shares. And then the value of these shares go up with the market. They go down with the market. But you're always buying more and more shares. You want a lot of shares. So you like the down market because you're getting more for your money, right? But what if right before you retired, the market fell, like in 2007, and you went from, let's say, $250,000 in your account to $100,000? Do you take that 100000 and say, I'm going to go retire now? Or do you work four or five more years to build it back up, then retire? So this is kind of the safety net in the event of a down market. So let me explain. Um, I'm just going to make this just a little bit bigger. I'm a visual person. I like seeing things um, clearly. Let me just see if I can do this. Okay. So if you choose the select funds, there's two, you're going to see two balances. One is we guarantee you all your contributions. So if you put $10,000 in, you'll have $10,000 in there at the end of the year. Plus, we guarantee you 3% increase annually. So the worst you can do that year is 3%. That's the worst you can do. So here's your benefit base. Here's your money going in and the 3% annually. All right, that's the yellow line. But we're saying to you, you can still invest this money into the market. So it's almost like a race. Who does better, my 3% or the market's up and down? In this scenario, actually, I didn't really want that. Well, we'll do this scenario. This scenario, the market did better. So I'm working away. I'm putting my money into this benefit base. But look, my market value did better. You step up to that market value. You can take your money and do whatever you want with it. Or you can draw 5% of that balance for the rest of your life, even if your account balance goes to zero. So if you have $250,000 in there, you can drive um, draw 5% of that annually, and even if your account balance, you live to 130 years old, and your account balance is zero, you still can collect that 5%. Okay. But so what? So basically you're going to create your own pension. So what if the market fell? I feel like I feel left-handed mm -hmm. for some reason. Okay, here we go. So this scenario is, again, the benefit base goes in, it's my contribution plus 3%, I still get to invest it, but in this case, the market fell right before I, I retired. But because I had this feature, I was locked in. So I can then drop 5% of that benefit base for the rest of my life. All right, so it kind of gives you that protection in this down market. In the up market, you just step up to that up market. Now, the reason why I'm explaining this to you is in your book, if, like, you don't have this, but when you get the investment book or my friends online, um, I, did you send out the PDF file to everybody? Okay. So when you look at that PDF file, it's called a fund book, F-U-N-D. Um, and in it, there's funds that, that are called select funds. And in the upper left, or excuse me, yeah, upper left hand corner, it tells you like the history, what the returns are. It also tells you what the expense ratio is. That's the cost to that fund. You have to add 0.75 to it. In order to get the guarantee, your contribution, 3% and 5% draw for all of your life, it costs 75 basis points, or 0.75. So you need to add 0.75 to that amount. Right? And that gives you all the guarantees. So the amount that you contribute? So, so what happens is when you look at like returns of a fund, so like this one said, let me just see what this one says. So like it had a 9.07% um, 9 9 return. That's less the fees. So it probably earned a 10 point something percent return. The fees are always removed. So when you look at even your statements, that's always less the fees. Right, that's a net number. So you're either going to do net 3% or better. I don't know which one you're going to do. Right. So, and I know there's a handful of you in here that have 
similar font at Princely had a select kind of account, but it didn't have this feature on there. So you either were in a conservative, a moderate, or an aggressive model in principle. When you moved over, that actually went to the 2020 portfolio. If you want to go into the similar type of thing, that's what this select guaranteed income fund is. Okay. And here's the thing. Don't worry too much about it. There is a guarantee if you're interested in it talk to Jeff, we can come back and do just a meeting on that. Because um, it has a couple features. One, you have to be part of it for five years in order to get that 5% drop. So as an example, I'm not, but if I was 62 years old today and I know I need my money when I'm age 65, probably not a good idea because that's only three years. But if I'm 62 years old and I know I can hold on to that money and, and not withdraw it for five years, it might be a good idea for me. Um, also, at retirement, it's determined. You get a 5% draw, but if you have a spouse, you can do 4.5% draw for all of your life, and then if you were to expire, it would continue to 4.5% for your spouse. So there's all these little tiny little features around it that, um, you know, that we want to teach you, but in lieu of time, and it's not for everybody, but if it's of interest, let Lynn know. Jeff and I will, are happy to come back. It's a fast meeting. It's like 15 minutes, so um, just so you can get a better understanding. Meanwhile, there is information in the book and you can go online as well. Okay. Um, for my friends who are not in the plan, we certainly want you enrolling if you're eligible. There's all different ways of enrolling. In your book, there is an enrollment form. You can use your tablet or a computer. This is Dan, this is named Dan. Literally, he walks across your, your, your computer and says, hi, I'm Dan. Then he'll say, like, enter your contract number. And for my friends who are not in the plan, the information he's asking you is on the top of your pages. So it's asking you for an access code and a contract number. So these are people not in the plan. You have your access code and contract number up here. So when Dan says, enter your contract number, look at your contract number. Access code, here's your access code. And he will walk you through the whole thing. You'll take the risk quiz. You'll do all of that, and he enrolls you, literally. It's, it's hilarious. When I did it, I cracked up. I was like, I thought it was funny that he's telling you what to do. And he's like, good job. So it's kind of really funny. <laughs> Um, the other way you can do it is your smartphone, and then we have a desk, a live person such as myself. You can talk through, we'll fill out the form for you if you don't want to fill out your form, and we'll send your form off to your um, HR department. All right, so if those not in the plan, you have all different ways of enrolling. You are eligible, so certainly fill out that form. And if, you don't, if you're saying, should I or shouldn't I, start with 1%. You know, finance 101, you should be at 10%. But we understand that your families you need to eat, you need to enjoy life, but you have to remember that you're going to retire one day. So certainly kind of um, build off of that. Now, uh, the website, here's our website, and I'm going to go through that in just a second, web demo, and I just want to show you how easy it is to access it. I'm going to open up to questions. I also want to let you know that your statements are going to, go mail, are going to be mailed to your home. Statements are very easy to understand. Beginning balance, what you've contributed, minuses and pluses of the market, and then your ending balance. So really clear, really easy to see. I'm going to open it up to questions and um, let Jeff field some of those questions while I get to the internet here. Come on, we'll be sure. yes. You weren't mailing statements to our house previously, right? That's new. The quarterly statements, really? No, they're right. they came here. No, we are receiving no. all the notifications that you can yeah. log on if you want. Right, yeah, I just got it. Different like companies are done differently. Maybe. I just, I've got a few yeah. different companies. Some actually, yeah, usually come in and they just say, right. We're saving on the paper so we can retire. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Yes. What's your personal take on Social Security? I know a bunch of us here you know, in our 20s. What, do you have any? Ask your congressman. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, it's, 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 Did you just want to say that because you wanted to say you were 20? <laughs> it's, a very, it's a valid question. I mean, I, I usually it's interesting. So when I do analysis, a lot of people. Um, you can, you, there's two ways. You can put it in the model for people, and, and we can take it out and or we can reduce it. Because some people don't know if I'm going to take it at 62, if I'm going to take it at 67, if I'm going to wait. So, uh, but Social Security actually isn't just retirement. It's also, if you become disabled, you can collect early. It's also like benefits for, for children. There's a whole bunch of different stuff that goes into Social Security. I just would hate to be the president that takes it out. But, um, yeah, so. And then the other, other question, when Lynn goes through this, one of the things people always get confused about, especially for people that haven't signed up, when you go into the 401k, this is what's either your prior plan or this plan, just remember, if you make a change to your portfolio, if you sort of say, okay, I want to go to target base, but I want to be a little more aggressive, so I'll go to a later target date, 
or I want to change my ratios, there's two parts. One is my existing funds, what I've already contributed, and also then there's also future contributions. If you just change one and you're like, why do I have these other funds they're not changing? It's because you haven't changed both, both sides of the equation. So just remember that's my future contributions and my existing contributions. Because that's always a question I get calls or an email from somebody, hey, made a change, I don't, I don't see what's going on. So that's what happens. So if you want to increase your percentage that you have taken out, yeah, you can actually go online and, and, and make, the, make the change and then the payroll company gets you get the plan. And then while we're touching on that, if you guys had already set up your plan to automatically increase, that feature's been turned off, you have to go back in and turn it back on and set up your insurer again about how much you want to increase and what you want to go So like you register and then you register. If you register, yeah, yeah. then you're... I'm sorry, I understood the question. I, I registered. Oh, then I'm saying is that there's a feature. There's the there's a one percent increase. You something like every year from January. If I'm doing five percent next year, I want to go automatically up by one percent. That feature, when when you switch companies, that feature is turned off because it, they can't make the assumption you want to do that. So you have to go yep. back at, yep. and okay. turn it back. Set it back up, up again. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> This uh, plan highlight sheet's got uh, vesting and employer contributions. Is there at this time that feature? No. Okay, just check. No, there could be. Okay. There is not. Not okay. at this time. Not at this time. <laughs> yes. But it, when we do something, it's built into it, so that it's already, so it's it's already done there. Got it. Yeah. So, Jeff, do you get, um, do you make recommendations on which funds if you wanted to build our own, which funds to select? Like, I have a friend who's uh, done very well, and he keeps telling me about this uh, Fidelity Select Fund, which is heavy in healthcare. You actually have healthcare options. You have healthcare, you actually have a real estate section. You've got some other options on this plan that I did not have on the last plan. Yeah, there's actually there's a couple target date funds. Um, and if there's something else you see out in the universe that you're interested in, I can always include it. In the you know if that's one of them? What's that? You know if that's one of them? Healthcare is definitely is Um Actually, it's, it's more of an ETF. It's actually less fees. And it's actually less better performance than so, okay. I know there's no one, so I do have people on that. Um, How are participants charged the fees? It's, we whatever see the, that? Is it disclosed? Then? It's always, yeah, it's always disclosed. Any of your stuff that you see, if it says 1%, that's all the fees. That's the record keeper fees, my fees, the, the federal administration, the investment companies, those are all the fees wrapped into it. So you'll see it on your statement, and fees are calculated daily, they're deducted quarterly. So you'll see them on the statement. You'll have a section that says summary of charges, it'll be a dollar amount. So you'll know what you pay in terms of dollars. So if you go on, you see, you know, if it says like 1%, it's not going to say 1% on your statement, it'll be what the dollar amount is that 1% of Because if you have two or three funds, you're going to have different costs associated. So it'll show you the lump sum cost that you're paying for that quarter. That, that's interesting to me. Like, I never noticed it before, but when I pulled up the uh, principal account just to see where I was yeah. as it was transferred and that you guys had taken the money out, yeah. each fund had a different fee. Yes, right. expense ratio. Well, international funds are just more expensive and okay. it's more than management I, I, companies. I, I, than investment I never companies. noticed it before. Yeah. 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 So Right, so like an index fund that has no managers would be a lot yeah. less than an, an international fund which has a manager searching and researching and you know, it kind of pays. Yeah, like, I just brought this up. Like, if I look at Vanguard and cap fund right here, the total expense ratios are 1.12 percent, so basically 1 percent, 1 percent. So that's the total. No matter what, whatever you invest, there's always investment fees behind the stuff. And you're saying overall Hancock is cheaper than the principal. Yeah, it's probably we saved about probably 40 basis points on the average. On the average fund, it's almost 50, depending on which fund, especially the international funds and the target date funds. We saved uh, I think the target date for almost 50. So I can't get onto the website. Um, they just changed our password, but I think someone is on it, so it's our tutorial, so it's not like the real site. It wouldn't be yours anyway, but this is what the website looks like. Um, everyone would go on and register first. You'll need your contract number, so everyone has their contract number in their book. Um, let's see if it's on all books. So if you're looking for your contract number and you're in the plan, let's just see if we have it somewhere here. There's a piece called Your Form. It'll be in that. 
and your form for people in the plan, you can change your deferment amount here if you'd like, or you can just go online and change that deferment amount in your form. Yeah. So people in the plan, in the back pocket, there's a thing called your form, um, and you can see there the pre and pre-tax and raw. So if you want to change your deferment amount, if you've been saving six percent, you now want to do three and three, you can do that, or you know. And then it has your consolidation information here, so that toll-free number to consolidate other 401k. I'm not talking about the principal. I'm talking about other 401k, and then you would just sign this. And on the website is beneficiary, so you'll want to update that, and or at least add a beneficiary if you're starting out. So you want to make sure that you know you do have that. For my people in the plan, you have an enrollment form. So yours is slightly different. It's in the back pocket. And it looks like this. And it tells you all the different ways you can enroll, one being this form. I just want to show you, it's kind of scrolling through. You'll see Dan in a second. So how do I enroll online? You would still go to the, you know, your website, and then you'll see in a second, it'll say Dan. You can just tap this little, this little dot here. I'll bring you to Dan, because I'm lazy. OK, you just click here. I want to enroll, and Dan will enroll you. So it's for people not in the plan. We want to encourage you to get online. Certainly, the website, as I said, is easy. And I apologize, I can't get on. Uh, we have one you one tutorial user. Um, I think someone is using it. That's why I can't get on it. Any question? Let me recap for you. Why should I even participate? You're all going to stop working one day. Everyone is at some point. And I think that the thing here is that you need to decide when that is. Not um, because you don't have an account or you don't have a retirement plan and you have to work well into your ease. We want to make sure that while you're working, you decide what that is. So set a goal, figure out what you can contribute. If you've been contributing, increase as you go. Those of you in the plan, the money's coming over. Um, I believe the blackout is lifted because Lynn now can see her account, which means everybody can. Right? You don't have to stay in those investments. You're mapped over. Whatever you were like in the previous company, you were going to have like funds here. You've got the target dates. You've got that guaranteed funds. And you've got individual funds. If you want help on those investments, we're going to be here a little bit. Uh, we can walk you through a little bit more you know, tools on how to do that. I would definitely take a risk quiz, help, help yourself understand where you are. Um, again, statements are going to be mailed to you. Make sure you go online and fill out your beneficiary. Um, you can increase your contribution. As I said, people in the plan, that form, this is your form. You can contribute to your Roth and to your pre-tax, you know, whatever you want. And then we have the consolidation team. 